uh, my talk title is pretty vague, uh, so to give you some sense of what exactly I'll be talking about, uh, I'll be talking about recent achievements in AI, uh, two case studies in particular that generate, uh, that, that uh, indicate broader themes, so the compute inten intensiveness and data intensiveness of recent blockbuster AI achievements, uh, and what the implications are for the societal impact of AI. Uh, and then I'll talk about more general questions around the challenge of forecasting. So I won't be talking much about existential risk or any particular uh, risk to society in particular, but uh, you know, some of these themes are of relevance to policy analysis. If it's difficult to forecast AI, then uh, that's kind of a general problem across different risks. Uh, so as you all know, there's a lot that's been going on in uh, recent developments of AI. Um, and the two that I'll be focusing on are at the bottom here. So the Arcade uh, Learning Environment, uh, which is a platform for developing AI systems to play Atari games, uh, in which there's been a lot of progress. And then uh, that picture is from the match with Lisa Dole uh, against AlphaGo. And so I'll be calling this the uh, Alpha Star line of AI systems, which has uh, AlphaGo, AlphaGo Zero, Alpha Zero, and so forth. Um, so there's been a lot of improvements in AI, but often at greater cost than previous systems. So uh, some of the examples of costs broadly defined that are used to uh, produce these latest achievements include data, uh, knowledge of people who are sort of injecting uh, that expertise into the system, uh, software, uh, libraries, uh, hardware manipulation, so sort of human oversight, uh, computation, which is what I'll be uh, focusing in particular on, you know, the networking to do large decentralized systems, and of course time. Uh, so I'll be exploring this in the context of two cases in particular, both involving game playing, but they, again, illustrate larger themes. Uh, so the Alpha Star line of AI systems, uh, starting with AlphaGo and subsequently uh, additional systems, surpassed human performance in uh, 2016. Uh, but this wasn't the end of the road. There were additional improvements thereafter. So this is uh, what's called the ELO rating of different AI systems. And uh, AlphaGo Fan was the first one to be competitive with professional, uh, professional Go players. AlphaGo Lee is the one that beat Lee Sedol in that picture. And then you can see that there is continuing huge improvements. Uh, but the question is, how, what happened here? So there were some algorithmic improvements, uh, such as uh, changes to the actual uh, reinforcement learning algorithm and uh, various, uh, various efforts to adapt the system to scale up to larger uh, computational power. But the, the, sh the sheer computational power itself is actually a significant part of the story. So uh, this is a bunch of AI algorithms. Uh, this is data gathered by um, uh, OpenAI. Uh, Dario Amade and Danny Hernandez. And so we see, uh, you know, t from roughly 2013 to 2018, and AlphaGo Zero and Alpha Zero are way up there in the upper right, uh, look, you know, in the vicinity of a thousand petaflop, uh, petaflop per second days. So that's uh, the m number of days in which you'd have to run a single system, which is itself running at one petaflop. So that's a whole lot more uh, computing power than was used even for relatively uh, large-scale, impressive applications of AI like neural machine translation, uh, Deep Speech 2, which was a record-breaking speech recognition system, and going back even further to the things that started the deep learning revolution like AlexNet. Uh, so what, what can we learn about this? Uh, I mean, one, one consideration is that uh, what we're really doing in, in this uh, progression from uh, along the alpha star systems is sub substituting one kind of data, so human demonstrations. The early, early AlphaGo systems bootstrapped from demonstrations of what it looks like to play Go from a human. Instead of that, we substituted another kind of cost, so computing power. So instead of you know, 200 GPUs or 1,000 GPUs, we use 5,000 TPUs, which each individually are more powerful uh, than GPUs. So uh, th this is a case of uh, you know, sort of you know, throwing a lot of both money and uh, technical hardware engineering expertise at a problem. Uh, so a similar story can be said in the case of uh, our, our, the arcade learning environment, or ALE. So there's steady algorithmic progress over time. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, you know, roughly at the bottom, there's 2015. These are uh, millions of frames 
of playing a, playing a, a bunch of different games, so 57 Atari games, and it's normalized to the human scale. So 100% on the y-axis means that across 57 games, you're playing roughly at the human level. Uh, so you can see that we've significantly surpassed the human level on this benchmark, uh, you know, big improvement over previous years, and that's all using roughly the same amount of computing and data. So there has, in fact, been algorithmic progress in recent years. But there's another side to the story, which is, again, that the headline results, so the equivalent of AlphaGo Zero or Alpha Zero, have been achieved at much larger cost. So the, these are a bunch of different plots from a recent paper I was involved in. Uh, called Accounting for the Neglected Dimensions of AI Progress. So this is compute versus score. So you can see that you can get an OK score, uh, you know, best linear on ESFF um, with a very small amount of compute. But to get really high scores, you need to increase the amount of compute. And this was a graph that was made just a few months ago. But since then, there's been a big improvement. So this is, this is the scale, again, 300% median performance. And this is just a few days ago. So Apex DQFD uh, used a huge amount more computation, and it also used human demonstration. So this is unlike the case of AlphaGo, where we went from no we went from human demonstrations to no human uh, to uh, we went from human demonstrations to no human demonstrations. In this case, not only are we adding compute, but we're also adding demonstrations in order to allow the system to learn faster. So you can tell it's completely off the scale. But I think this raises more general questions of how relevant are these applications that require huge amounts of computing power and human demonstrations to actual impacts. So it's hard to make forecasts in this area because people don't always report what the data requirements are, what the compute requirements are. It was very difficult to make some of these graphs. Uh, and people rarely make very falsifiable predictions because you know, it depends on what exactly you're looking at. Are you counting compute? Are you counting data? Are you just looking at algorithmic progress? And expert opinion is all over the place. So this is a table from our latest paper uh, with a bunch of different dimensions. So these correspond to what I was talking about earlier, the different costs for an AI system. So uh, you know, data, hardware, uh, manipulation, uh, computing power, et cetera. And all the Xs are cases that the papers did not report those costs. So we had to either estimate them, uh, or there was partial, partial information with the little circles, or there was accurate information with the, uh, the green check marks. Um, so this makes it really difficult. Uh, and another problem is that it's hard to make forecasts in AI because the benchmarks are constantly changing. People rarely evaluate on really old challenges that are basically solved because you don't learn anything interesting. And they don't try future challenges that are just intractable because they'll get a horrible score. So there's constantly changing standards. And there's a question of do you control for compute data, et cetera? So do you actually count something like this, or you just look at the, the smaller graph? Um, so just to, um, and you know, again, there, these are expert opinions on a bunch of different tasks from a paper by Grace et al. And it's you know, really all over the place in terms of how soon people think that you'll be able to automate a retail salesperson or a translate uh, at a uh, superhuman level or uh, beat StarCraft. So these are over decades in some case that expert opinion varies. So uh, I think we'll continue to see large, higher and higher peak performance of AI systems, but that'll depend in large part on the continuation of those hardware trends, at least for these sort of blockbuster results. That doesn't mean that it's applicable to everyone. In many cases, simpler algorithms will be uh, more useful, and you don't necessarily need to you know, go off the chart in terms of performance. Uh, but if we don't have these hardware advances, then the financial costs of these big demonstrations, like AlphaGo, will only grow much, uh, much larger over time, and they're already in the tens of millions of dollars. Uh, so broad societal, societal deployment will depend on reducing these costs, uh, so both the hardware and the data costs, so not just making the hardware itself cheaper, but using less of it. Uh, as well as increasing robustness. So you can think of lack of robustness as a cost because it might require a human to intervene or it might require more uh, sort of human uh, machine symbiosis, which can be the right decision in some cases. But if you want full automation, uh, then you can think of this as a sort of cost that also needs to be reduced. Uh, so, uh, and then finally, I think we can expect greater impacts in domains where these key inputs that I'm talking about, so data, uh, simulators, so AlphaGo and Atari are both cases where you have a perfect simulation that you can run really fast and throw a lot of compute at the problem. Uh, and sometimes you can do that for physical problems, like if you have a good simulator of what a robot does, uh, but it doesn't always work. Uh, and then finally, human demonstrations. Uh, so those are my thoughts, and I'll be happy to answer more detailed questions after, uh, after my remarks.
Thank you.